If you've been on social media at all lately or saw the Super Bowl last year, then you've probably noticed an abundance of ads from a company called Timu. They're even getting so popular that Linus Tech Tips built a PC using parts from Timu. Uh, what? So what is Timu? Timu's a lot like Amazon if it was inside a Walmart that was also inside a Dollar Tree. They give you rock bottom prices on things you never knew you needed. Like, hey, do you need an electric nose hair trimmer? How about a mini printer that looks like an anime cat? But then there's a section of Timu that sells guitar equipment. They have a variety of things like effects pedals, guitar accessories, and even full-size guitars. Timu asked if they could sponsor this video, to which I said, sure. Not like I have much else going on at the moment. This is where the story takes a left turn or right turn if you're British. Timu did send me items and asked to sponsor this video. However, during the making of this video, I sort of stumbled. I don't know if that's exactly the right word, but I started reading about the news and the controversy going on with Timu. And if you don't know, I will get into that later because for me, it's personally kind of a problem. So I reached out to Timu, offered to send the stuff back and just told them that I couldn't proceed with the sponsorship because I didn't really feel comfortable taking their money after everything I found out during production. So why am I even releasing this video? Why not just scrap it? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, I know that not all people are going to be offended by the allegations against Timu. And probably a good portion of you won't even care, and that's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to think or to even necessarily badmouth Timu. There's no judgment here. If you want to give your money to Timu, that's your business. But I just think you should have all the information, you know? The other reason is I see a lot of other YouTubers taking the sponsorship and promoting Timu, and I just want to offer a view that's not colored by sponsorship money. Now, just to be clear here, I don't judge you or any other YouTuber that wants to shop on or promote Timu's platform, and I don't think that you should either. But I would strongly encourage you to read about Timu's shady handling of your personal data before I promoted their platform and told you to go download the app or go to their website. So with that said, let me show you what a budget guitar looks like from Timu, and then I'll get into why I bailed on the sponsorship. What's up, everybody? I have some stuff here from uh, Timu. If you aren't familiar with Timu, you've probably seen them like on Instagram ads or whatever, you know, when you click the little thing and it tries to get you to download the app. That's them. That's, that's the Timu. But anyways, uh, Timu reached out to me. They're like, hey, we have guitar stuff and we like your channel and we'd like to send you some guitar things to show people on your channel. I have no idea what they sent me. Let's open it up and check it out. I'm assuming this is a guitar. It looks like a guitar. This box is pretty beat up, by the way. Just FYI. So, uh, you know, we'll see how this arrived. Okay, well, let's check. Oh, it's actually in a gig bag. Look at that. Oh, look, there's goodies in here too. Oh, operation instructions. Interesting. So this is a Dlazo, Dlazo guitar. Uh, looks like we have some extra guitar strings in here, some picks or plectrums, a string winder, a strap. Is that a strap? A guitar strap? Came in a little case with that. Okay. And here is the guitar. Let's check. I have no idea what this guitar looks like. So let's check it out here. Oh, we have an instrument cable attached to the headstock there. Bubble wrap and bag. Jesus Christ, this is like in here. Holy cow. A little overkill. Okay. Normally I try and save these dust jackets, but this thing is like on there really Wow. All right. So I didn't really know what to expect here. I know that this guitar is like super inexpensive. It's another way of saying cheap. <laughs> so I was kind of expecting, you know, this is actually like pretty decent though. The frets are like not great, like they're a little, ugh, they're like a little bit of fuzz on here. Dlazo, just do it for guitar, bass, and ukulele. Star your enjoyment. That's what it says right here. Star your enjoyment. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means, but yeah. You know, I don't know exactly what you would expect for guitar for so little, but uh, you know, this is kind of what I expected a little bit. Let's, uh, we'll go into that here in a second. They sent some other stuff too. Be interesting to see what else is in. Look at these bags they sent me stuff in. Okay, so we also have bag number one. What is this? This looks like a pedal. Mini Universe M M -va -vave? M Vave pedal. It's got a plane on it. We got a plane, it's like flying, it's like polluting the atmosphere or something. I don't know. Oh, this thing's actually pretty cool looking. Mini, oh, this is like a reverb pedal. So we have this pedal also. That they sent we'll just put that up here all right well, i don't know what this is but it feels kind of heavy these look like some sort of fretboard markers wow oh cool this is like this is like a guitar kit we got like a sanding block sort of thing here dude there's all sorts of stuff in here another sort of sanding block this is for like polishing frets it's got the little fret things on here probably need that for this guitar extra strings and picks string winder some different like gauges you know, like a gauge thing. Um, I have no idea what this is. This is just an example of the things you could order from Timu. Uh, and I bet you this would all cost you like $5. 
<laughs> basically. I don't actually know that. Let's see what else we got in here. What are the random things they send me? Oh, okay. Oh, it comes with screws and drywall anchors too, but these are, I don't know if I would use these drywall anchors. They look a little bit small. It's like a wall hanger for your guitars. Send me a bunch of these. And you know, this is like the majority of the stuff that I saw on Timu when I was looking and I was like, you know, just, just send me the things you want to be in the video. I'm not gonna look through all this stuff. Is it's like, look, guitar picks. There's a bunch of guitar picks and a guitar pick holder. This is probably like a dollar or something like that. These are probably not the type of picks that I would use personally. They're like super thin, but you know, that was nice of them, I guess, to send that. And uh, the last thing here, this is something that I actually did ask for. Uh, an Aztec death whistle, because you know, death metal. You know what I mean? I just thought this would be really cool to have. I've always kind of like wanted one of these things. If you aren't familiar with an Aztec death whistle, let me familiarize you here with what this does. Uh, it makes this sort of sound. Okay, this is everything they sent me and I have no idea how I'm gonna make an actual like video with this stuff, but uh, let's plug in the guitar and check it out. Okay, so I have the Dlazo, Dla you know, the guitar we just talked about. I have this plugged in to a Soldano mini amp. Now this is the bottom end of the budget side of the spectrum in terms of guitars. I couldn't find this exact model on Timu to uh, give you guys a price on it, but I think it's like $100, something like that. It's like right around $100, maybe $119 something. I would be surprised if we can keep this guitar in tune, but. Maybe if we go to the Crunch Channel. It's a middle pickup. Okay, so I did a budget. Oh, the thing fell off. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the interesting things about this pickup selector is if you put the knob on all the way, you can't actually get it to position one or position five. Like it has to be kind of off the end a little bit. You might want to put a little glue on that if you buy one of these things. This definitely didn't come from a factory where someone knew how to set up a guitar or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like this definitely just came from a factory where they just make things are like other things. In terms of craftsmanship, it is exactly what I would expect in this situation. Uh, not the best craftsmanship in the world, but it's surprisingly not uncomfortable to play, which is a positive. It seems like a weird thing to say. It's fine. It's not, you know, I don't know. How do, how do I say this without just being a dick? <laughs> I did a video a while back on like, you know, the cheapest guitar I could find on Amazon. But let's check out the actual guitar here and see. This thing feels like a toy. But that guitar came with some other stuff, but it was actually unplayable. Like the frets were sharp, uh, the neck was super thick. It was like unfinished, like it just didn't even feel like a guitar. You know, it felt like a guitar that I had tried to build in shop class in high school out of like two by fours and plywood. Uh, this isn't that, you know, this is okay. You know, this might be suitable for you, especially if you wanna like mod it or you wanna do upgrades to it and you don't wanna spend much money on a guitar, you know, you wanna like, hack it up and do weird experimental things to it. It's not gonna stay in tune. This guitar is not gonna stay in tune. It's just a matter of like me being able to play around it not staying in tune. Let's, uh, let's check out this pedal descent. I gotta be honest with you. I like this pedal. This pedal is like, nice. I like the pedal a lot. The pedal's very nice. And this pedal's probably like 20 or $30 or something like that. So the guitar here, this is the biggest thing they sent me. Uh, like I said, I think that like, I would just prefer spending a little bit more money and getting something a little bit nicer. And I think that like the instrument you're playing, like in your hands, like the feel, that all matters and stuff. Um, the neck feels like a little bit unfinished in spots, but it's not too bad. Uh, we do have like some weird fuzz caught in the frets up here, like fuzz and glue or something like that. Uh, the top of the fretboard is like a little bit splintery, but none of these things are like super offensive for how much the guitar costs. Now, in terms of like the pedal, I think the pedal's great. 
I think the pedal's a big win. I think the pedal's probably the coolest part of the whole package. But, uh, you know, if you wanted to buy, like, a budget guitar, I would just warn you that, like, you know, you're going to get something that probably is not going to stay in tune very well. Uh, the craftsmanship is a little bit eh on it. But if you're cool with that and, like, you want to mod it, you know, you want to do some things to it, then, like, there you go. $100 guitar. All right, so if you just tuned in to see what a cheap guitar from Timu looked like, there you go. It's a little underwhelming. Probably not super surprising to anybody. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe on your way out. For the rest of you that are interested in the drama and why I canned this sponsorship, I owe you an explanation. After I had agreed to the sponsorship fee and I made the video, I was editing and looking for B-roll and I came across several articles accusing Timu of significant violations of US law by providing an unchecked channel that allows goods made with forced labor to flow into the United States. And if that legal speak isn't clear to you, we are talking about slavery. Now, to be fair, that's just one side of the story, so what's Timu's response? Their defense is that they are just a selling platform and aren't responsible for enforcing these regulations. They even have a reporting system that consumers and sellers could use to file complaints. They also ask sellers to sign a code of conduct specifying a zero tolerance policy for the use of forced, indentured, or penal labor. Timu's code of conduct also says the company reserves the right to inspect factories and warehouses to ensure compliance. This also means that they can absolve themselves of any responsibility for allowing forced labor made products into their supply chain. I mean, there was no note in the complaint box, so everything must be all good, right? And even if there was an issue, Timu's defense is that we don't buy or sell anything, so we can't be responsible for any trade violations. So who is responsible? You, the consumer. Timu also argued that its use of direct shipping meant that the U.S. consumer, not Timu, would bear the ultimate responsibility for adhering to the ban on forced labor goods. Okay, so that seems pretty bad, and I know that an argument can be made that in a capitalist society, there will always be human suffering somewhere in the supply chain, which I agree, and I think it's a deep, nuanced topic that I'm probably not the most intelligent or informed person to speak on. You can also make the argument that these are just blown out of proportion allegations, and maybe the U.S. government is trying to ban competition to stop them from hurting Amazon's business, or who knows. That could be true also. But there's another thing that really bothered me about Timu, and really the reason I just couldn't in good faith do the sponsorship and it's your privacy. Right now, Timu is being accused of willingly accessing and stealing customers' personal data, including text messages, notifications, and biometric data, things they don't need access to for you to buy cheap shit off their website, and as a result, is currently in a class action lawsuit from the Illinois Supreme Court. This to me at best is sketchy, and I can't make a video with my endorsement that you go to their website or download their app, knowing that you might have your personal data stolen. Now, if you didn't know about any of this, it's okay. Neither did I until I was looking up a Timu ping for my video. Or is it? PNG. Pung. Look guys, I hate having to do this in a video. I don't want to be in the middle of a bunch of drama, but everything in my heart just told me that this was wrong and that I should say something about it. I did link a charity below, so if you want to donate to the cause of fighting forced labor, you can do so there. I also linked a few articles and videos if you want to know more about this subject, because I'm really not the one to deliver the full comprehensive scope of the problem. I just want to make guitar content. I never wanted to be in the position of having to relay the news. You know what I mean? Okay, I promise in the next video I won't just drop something so heavy on you unless we're talking like chugs. I sincerely apologize. I even had to bring this up, but I think in the end it was the best way to deal with the situation. A big heartfelt thank you to all of the patrons that support this channel. I really couldn't do it without you guys. And until next time, which is hopefully much less sad, I'll see you later. Bye guys.